Firstly, we would like to thank the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences for inviting ADEC to talk about micro-credentials at UM. So today we are going to introduce, to explain to you on what is micro-credentials at UM, or in short, we call it MC at UM as a whole, and ADEC's role in helping UM educators in developing and publishing their online courses. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to unmute your mic and talk to us, or you can just type it in in the chat area. So today we have Associate Professor Dr. Faradina Yusuf, the Director of EDEC, and she will talk about micro-credentials. And we also have Dr. Zahiruddin Fitri Abu Hassan, the Deputy Director e-Learning Innovation and Technology, who will explain to you about FutureLearn, the platform we use for MC at UM. So for the sake of everyone who is already here, we will start now, but don't worry, as it will be recorded, those who came in later can watch the video and catch up what they have missed. Dr. Farah, if you are ready, the screen is yours. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Um, I'm Farah Dina Yusuf from Faculty of Education, also currently Director of EDEG. Um, and my co-speaker, Deputy Director, Dr. Zahiruddin Abu Hassan from Fakulta Lambena, also uh, from EDEG. We will share with you some of the uh, progress and also the basics of uh, micro-credentials at UM. Thank you so much for the Faculty of uh, Arts and Social Sciences for inviting us. Actually, this is the second um, session we had with you. The first one was, uh, I think, only with the Ketua Jabatan, but now uh, with everyone, so we are pleased. Uh, for the first part, Dr. Zahi will present first, yeah? Dr. Zahi, and then okay. I will, yeah, and then I will follow up uh, after that. Okay. So how, how long do I have? <laughs> <laughs> I think we have is it two hours for this session? So yeah. I'll, I'll try to keep it uh, at half an hour uh, so that then you have more time to, to, to talk. This guy's all right. Okay, okay, let me share the screen. Um, hopefully, you are looking at the screen right now. Um, okay, so um, uh, thank you for. Uh, being with us um, today, uh, and I can see that uh, it's not only um, uh, our colleagues from uh, Faculty of Arts, but uh, also uh, people from uh, different faculties. I can I can see people from uh, education. I can see also people from Pasom and uh, the rest of the university. So um, again, uh, welcome and thank you for uh, being with us uh, today. So let's um, continue with the uh, introduction to uh, micro-credentials uh, at uh, UM. So um, I will try to um, go through this um, presentation quickly. Um, but if you do have a question, just feel free to stop uh, me and, and ask. Uh, it's uh, divided into several parts. Um, the first is just the introduction to the micro-credential and so to the platform that uh, we use uh, for MOOCs and credential. So um, before we sort of uh, go on further, uh, it's uh, quite important for us to, to define uh, what micro-credential is. So, uh, so this is a micro-credential definition from uh, MQA, and this was released back in May 2020. So uh, when, when we look at the uh, definition here, it, talks about uh, a digital certification of assessed knowledge. So uh, we know that um, a course that we uh, offer in the university is a, is, is a certification of assessed knowledge. But now what we are doing is we are putting the digital impact on putting it in the in digital format. And the digital format of uh, the, the, the certification also comes with uh, the platform that will uh, be used to offer those courses. And when we look at the uh, further along, uh, the uh, further down the line, it talks about uh, accredited program 
or standalone courses. So accredited program it means a, a program of study that is accredited by NQA themselves. So that means any or, or all of the programs that we uh, offer, courses that we offer are accredited, hopefully. Um, uh, and of course, we can also uh, offer standalone courses, the courses that is sort of outside of the accreditation um, uh, regime. Okay. Um, and before um, we sort of um, zoom in into our uh, platform, which is FutureLearn, uh, you, you will be able to know or you might already have known that there are uh, many other platforms out there that offers uh, micro-credentials uh, and, online, and online courses. So uh, courses like Coursera, EDX uh, are quite, quite popular as platforms. UDST, not many people know about it. Um, and then you also have uh, open learning. And um, we team up uh, with uh, FutureLearn since 2016, actually, to start offering or designing online courses. And we uh, have uh, been uh, working with them uh, up until now and hopefully uh, into the future. So uh, what are the differences between um, MOOC, uh, MC, and uh, online DP. So it's, it's it's actually something that you can stack together. So that means um, normally um, during the first years of uh, MOOC, back in 2012, uh, people started with uh, offering MOOC courses. You en enroll for free, and then uh, if you want the certificate, then uh, you can uh, pay. And then uh, the, as the model evolved, uh, we can see now we are having um, micro-credentials and online degrees. That is actually a step up of uh, each other. So um, MC is a step up of a MOOC where you bundle up these courses to uh, create a program certificate. And then um, to sort of, uh, to, uh, to support the model, instead of a free to learn, pay to certify, uh, format, then it becomes like a, a paper. So that means uh, you pay to get into the program, but with the payment, but with the early payment, you actually get uh, a certificate or a credit, university credit. Uh, and then um, there are already universities uh, who offer uh, online degrees. So online degrees, um, uh, like, like traditional uh, university degree, but it's offered entirely uh, online. So that is um, uh, uh, different uh, between uh, online degrees and microcredential. Uh, and also, uh, we also have the option to use the program certificate, uh, not as an online degree, but uh, a certificate to enhance the CV uh, for your, uh, or to further your career. So I will discuss this a little bit later when we talk about um, uh, microcredentials and also expert tracks, which is offered on the future platform. Okay, so, um, what are the, the main differences between MOOC and micro-credential? So just now we talked about the it's being MOOC being enrolled for free and then you pay to get the certificate. So that means the payment part is actually optional. So uh, you can actually learn everything and complete the whole course and then decide to either uh, uh, get the certificate or not. Okay, so that's a MOOC, uh, which is uh, a very voluntary basis to get the certificate. But the, 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 the enrollment, uh, the learning in the platform is actually uh, free. And then we, um, and then we lead, look at the micro-credential uh, program where uh, it's, it comes with the university credits. So in that case, uh, you still get the certificate, but you need to uh, pay upfront so that then uh, the university can actually uh, can uh, commit resources to uh, monitor and moderate the cost so that then uh, the students uh, will be able to um, will be able to be uh, uh, regulated during their studies. Uh, now, MOOC programs uh, are offered. Um, either uh, by a certain time period. So that means, um, let's say, for example, a three-week course, then uh, you, you can uh, study the three-week course for, uh, for, for a long time. Or when you look at micro-credential, we need to uh, actually look at the 
the, the moderation model. So that means uh, if it's, um, for example, if it's a six week course, then uh, all the six weeks, the educators should be present in all those of the six weeks so that then you can see monitor the, the, the learners uh, and track their progress and, uh, and help them um, make sense of the uh, courses. And of course, when you look at uh, university level courses, it's going to be a little bit more, uh, I would say, um, uh, complex than uh, a MOOC course, which is, uh, uh, which is a more towards like lifelong learning type of, of learning. And when you, when you look at the, the hours per week that the learners have to, uh, have to put in, it's also different. So uh, for uh, MOOC courses, it, it only uh, requires two or four hours uh, a week of learning time, but then when you talk about uh, a certificate bearing or a credit bearing course at the university level, then it will go up uh, to more than four hours a week of the learning time. Okay, so uh, that is uh, how uh, MOOC and micro potential are uh, different, but both actually uh, uh, is able to uh, to be designed as st stackable uh, certificate. So the, the, the ministry has started to talk about st st stackable certificates now. And of course, that is the sort of a pipeline for us to go into uh, uh, an online uh, of uh, the, the online degree that we see some universities um, have already started to uh, offer. So the, the certificate uh, of uh, the uh, the, the students or the, the learners will actually be a form of certificate that uh, uh, is available from the uh, the platform, but it will bear the logo of the university. So that means um, the the university uh, actually accredit that, that program and it will also have the signature of the lead educator, which is normally uh, us as the um, university uh, lecturers. Okay, so um, what would be the example of a course um, uh, in a future learn or, uh, or what we can offer uh, on a micro credential? So uh, this is an ex example, existing example that we can see. So this is from Griffith University uh, of Australia. Uh, actually, this is a joint venture between Deakin University and also Griffith University. Um, and you can see that um, the course um, is, um, how many weeks there? Uh, 13 weeks and it requires uh, three hours uh, a week. Uh, and of course, it's pay first. So that means you need to pay. Uh, so for, for this course, it's actually uh, 1000 uh, USD just uh, to, to get into the course and then uh, to learn for 13 weeks and to get the university credit. Okay, so um, uh, examples, other examples of uh, MOOC courses that we can see from the FutureLearn uh, website. You can actually go in uh, on the FutureLearn uh, website right now and actually look at the, the, the different categories of courses uh, in uh, the, the, the platform. So uh, this is um, uh, just an example. So we have uh, uh, courses from University of Waikato uh, and then uh, University of East Anglia uh, from Lancaster University and also from University of York, and these are only uh, for uh, literacy subjects. Okay, uh, these are another uh, example. So this is also for uh, the liter the literacy subjects um, uh, from University of Edinburgh, Open University, British Council, and so uh, Manchester uh, Grammar School. So uh, for for micro credentials, uh, we do uh, see also different courses and different categories of courses. So this is, I think, um, uh, more related to Faculty of um, Arts and Social Sciences. So this is a politics and uh, society courses, uh, MC courses, micro credential courses. So you can see here the course um, uh, from University of Kent is actually three, a combination of three courses carried over uh, 12 weeks and it is at a postgraduate level. Okay. And we compare it to the one from the Open, Open University UK, um, and this is uh, a single course, but it is uh, carried over uh, 10 weeks, but it, it is an undergraduate course. So it shows here that 
uh, my credentials and MOOCs can be offered at different levels. So it can be offered at postgraduate level. Uh, it can also be uh, offered at the undergraduate level. And you can, and there is flexibility for you to design the, the course, whether you can, uh, you wanted to go with um, a three course per week. So uh, basically it will be uh, four weeks uh, course uh, times three that you get to have their weeks, or you can design it as a single 10 weeks course. So this is uh, what uh, university, uh, the Open University is doing with the tackling climate crisis. So, and uh, all these courses would come with um, a university credit. So that means um, uh, after finishing the course, even at postgraduate, even at undergraduate level, the students will get, uh, uh, like us, uh, three credits. Uh, that they can actually exchange when they go into the university itself. So it doesn't have to be that the students or the, the learners are currently enrolled in the university. They can have the, they can uh, take the course while they are working, for example, and um, um, and prior to prior for them joining the university. So when they decide to join the university, uh, they will be able to sort of convert the credits or transfer the credits from the university into their uh, program study. So, so it, it allows the students flexib flexibility in terms of uh, studying. So that means they can take several uh, micro-credential courses first so that then they can sort of shorten their, 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 their study time or study period or they take the courses to lighten their academic loads when they are in the university. So that is uh, some of the strategies or uh, examples that how people can use uh, the micro-credential courses to help them to go along in their studies. Okay, so these are a um, uh, uh, few more examples from different universities. So you can see um, uh, Open University has a lot of courses uh, in uh, FutureLearn and a good reason for that is um, they actually co-own the uh, the platform uh, but then we also have uh, uh, top universities like like Glasgow and also um, so the one um, uh, the one that we are looking at is actually Deakin so Deakin is an Australian university okay uh, and then um, there are uh, other categories of courses in the, in the future platform. So uh, like, like here, it's uh, an expert track course. So an expert track is a different uh, categories of course. Uh, it's uh, normally geared toward um, industry people or people who are working. So the audience would be uh, quite niche, I would say. Uh, but then it uh, also have its own um, uh, uniqueness. Uh, deep, uh, deep, uh, that's different than uh, university uh, level courses. So uh, if you look at uh, expert course, it's more towards the, the professionals where you earn the digital uh, certificate to, um, uh, to, uh, to for, for example, if you want to change jobs uh, and your, your, your future employee or your, your future employer, for example, uh, would like somebody who is um, uh, certified in certain things, then an expert track is something that we can actually design to help the the learners to um, showcase those, those new skills to their uh, employers. Okay, so so this is how uh, expert uh, track uh, works. So uh, what happened is um, uh, an expert track is um, uh, really really like um, uh, really really a niche area uh, that uh, that is. Um, can be offered by the university. So uh, how it works in the future and platform is that uh, you join a free seven day trial that you uh, can uh, go uh, through it for free. And then you pay a monthly uh, subscription fee and the fee is fixed. So $39, uh, 39 USD is fixed uh, uh, until you uh, finish the expert track. And uh, the the design uh, of the expert track is like this because uh, we are looking at a professional who are busy, isn't it? So they, they need to have that kind of flexibility for them to actually go through the course uh, at their own pace until they can finish it. After they um, uh, have 
finish the course, then they will be able to earn the um, uh, the certificate. If the design of the course uh, allows or uh, requires that the the students or the learners uh, uh, do uh, an an assessment, of course, then uh, the assessment needs to be completed. Then become and then you become uh, the expert in the field uh, where you have the uh, digital certificate that, uh, that comes with the expert track course. So how do we uh, in university um, uh, offer an expert track course? So what we can do is we can col collaborate with a professional body to offer CPD courses or uh, continuing uh, professional development courses. We can also collaborate with a uh, certain institute um, I don't know uh, in in a faculty of science, uh, sorry, faculty of uh, arts and social sciences, uh, what kind of institute that you are that you are uh, aligned with? For example, maybe um, just on top of my head, um, uh, Institute of Aging. Uh, I don't know whether that uh, is there such thing, um, or anybody one from. Uh, from uh, faculty of arts, can just, just name one or two institutes that you are aligned with? Anyone? Uh, okay, so uh, if, if, uh, maybe uh, it will take some time for you to, to think about uh, that, uh, the, the institutes. So then you can also uh, do that. And of course, the, 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 uh, the cost uh, the expert track course uh, or certificates can actually be joined, uh, jointly signed by by UM. So when we see the, the example just now, isn't it uh, offered by um, Deakin University and also Griffith University? So we can we can actually offer uh, that that kind of courses as well. And uh, an expert track with a world renowned expert. So that means that means you uh, out there. Um, so I think uh, Faculty of Arts. Uh, has um, produced some really like, renowned uh, and really famous people, isn't it? Uh, and you, uh, uh, people like uh, the late uh, Tan Si Kim, um, uh, and also, um, uh, I, I, so that's the uh, the one that comes into my head. Uh, and of course, you would you would have uh, emeritus professors who are really really uh, uh, the expert in their in their field. And those are the ones that we you can actually create uh, expert track courses with so to learn with the, the expert just uh, one expert on a topic that's uh, really dear to the expert's heart then uh, it becomes uh, a course in itself so how that how is it then different than my credential because it looks like it's um, almost um, it, it's almost there isn't it um, the, uh, the, the the differentiation is not that um, really uh, it's not that 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 big. So a micro credential is actually uh, is is created for uh, the higher education um, uh, sphere. So that means when when you do uh, when you create or when you design a course uh, with a micro credential, so what happens is actually you are designing a course based on uh, uh, an accredited program. So just now when we look at the definition by MQA. Um, it talks about uh, an academic degree program, isn't it? So, if, for example, you are teaching uh, in um, media studies and you have you have a course with a course code that you know people are really clamoring to get into, then that can be an uh, an idea that you can actually develop that course as a micro credential with a credit. Uh, that attached to it, so that means um, uh, if or when the the learners come into the university, they can actually transfer that credit into the course. So uh, again, the, the 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 mechanism is um, like uh, what is shown here. So you learn online with the expert instructors. Um, it, uh, it will be um, uh, between I would say it's twelve to sixteen weeks. This is what they say, uh, but if, when you look at the the, the model or the, the examples in the future the platform uh, it's actually anywhere between uh, uh, 6 uh, to 10 to 12 to 14 or to 16 weeks uh, and it is a complete credit pairing course so that means if your course is three credits then you teach the whole three credits but you can actually have the option 
to separate the the the, the fourteen weeks into several courses, like uh, the example that we see uh, before. And of course, um, with university credit bearing costs, there will be uh, an assessment. It doesn't have to be project based. It can be uh, any types of assessment. And then uh, after you completed the course and finished the uh, the assessment, then you will earn the uh, professional credit, uh, the professional credential, the the certificates that you have paid. Uh, beforehand, and then you can uh, use that uh, either to uh, just to further your career. So that means you you don't have to uh, convert the credit bearing cost into the university. You can actually show this to uh, your uh, employer and say, I actually have uh, completed uh, a course, a university level course, and I may I can I have a raise, for example, or. Um, uh, you want to go into higher education, so you can actually transfer those, those credits into the university that accepts it. So, um, so this is an example of a uh, micro credential uh, certificate uh, that comes from Open University and uh, Glasgow. So, uh, at the postgraduate level, it's 10 UK credits. So, uh, um, when I look uh, and I check in the uh, in the uh, the website. 10 credits is, uh, I think, equivalent to our three credit costs. So that means uh, uh, three credit is uh, 120 uh, notional hours, isn't it? Uh, so, so that's uh, uh, that's 10, 10 UK credits. So, and it's both at the undergraduate level and also a uh, postgraduate uh, level. So uh, that is how um, this actually then uh, uh, transferred into uh, the, uh, the university uh, itself. All right, so um, uh, I think um, uh, towards the end or, or what we wanted actually in the future is that uh, after we created uh, a lot of uh, courses uh, or we or we designed the, the, the offering of our uh, online courses, uh, either MOOC or micro credentials, we are actually thinking about offering an online degree in the future. So that means uh, we slowly build up our our repertoire of uh, courses from our faculties uh, that leads to a program uh, like uh, the one that we see here, uh, the University of Newcastle it actually offers um, uh, the Bachelor of Arts uh, as an online degree. So, so that is how we, we think about and we look at uh, the offering of um, micro credentials, uh, MOOC, and online degree in the educational sphere. Uh, and this is, I think, uh, something that uh, we can actually pursue, and it will um, purely sit within the uh, university transformation uh, program or uh, university transformation plan. And uh, both uh, the, the university transformation plans 2020, and uh, sorry 2025, and also the the the, the next initiative, which is uh, the university, um, the, 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 so it sits between the five pillars. I, I suddenly um, suddenly forgot uh, which pillars does it does it stand in uh, when the, the one that uh, our BC uh, Prof Hamdi is is talking about is it passionately talking about uh, all the transformation uh, and 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 this. A program uh, with the uh, online platform uh, is actually part of that um, uh, uh, drive uh, of the initiative uh, by the uh, PC. Okay, I think um, uh, that's my part. So um, I think uh, you, uh, Dr. Farah can sort of uh, jump in and um, continue. So I, I do keep my promise. I try to keep my presentation to half an hour so that then she can uh, uh, talk more and of course uh, accept your uh, your questions um, and we I, I will also be able to answer your questions uh, when when uh, you when we come to the q a session thank you dr zahi nak na minta tolong tekan tekan slide because you are sharing the slide kan okay okay oh sorry please. okay um, Dr. Zahir, eh, hilang. Am I? Uh, am I? Ah, yeah, I did, I did. Okay, so Dr. Zahir has explained about the concept of micro-credentials and uh, I will 
uh, continue with what we have done so far in University of Malaya. Okay, um, it can be done. Okay, do not panic. Okay, walaupun tadi Dr. Zahir mentioned there are 20, uh, 12 to 16 weeks uh, courses, it looks a lot kan. Tapi actually we have done it. Okay, your colleagues have done it. And we started with only two to three weeks only. And soon we'll be coming with uh, six weeks courses. Eh, sorry, six weeks, you know, course, uh, which is we will put it as expert track. Okay, so let me introduce to you the 10 courses that we have published so far. Okay, the first one by Faculty of Science, Chemometrics in Air Pollution. This is three weeks course. And uh, secondly, Effective Communication Skills from, for Engineers from Faculty of Engineering. Introduction to Malay Language from APM, Academy Pengajian Melayu. And Islamic Calligraphy. Academy Pengajian Melayu. For your information, these two courses from APM are hot selling uh, course. Not selling, nanti tak banyak pakai duit pun. The very popular courses in our uh, future learn uh, platform. Okay, from uh, Medic, from Faculty of Medicine, they have uh, published research ethics and vulnerability, but this one is very specific for ethical research in adults with impaired decision making capacity so this is one of the uh, i'll show you later how uh, we can extract subtopics from our own course and make it into one uh, book or micro credential yeah okay uh, just recently published from faculty of engineering as well this one is titled ideation the first step in engineering design this is also extracted from academic course existing academic course at the faculty of engineering okay from faculty of medicine again uh, introduction to health research ethics they wanted their students before coming in uh, to their program to be able to learn the basics of uh, research mm. ethics so they have uh, developed this um, so this course is also available for stu existing students registered in that course. Okay? From Faculty of uh, FBL, Faculty Bahasa dan Literacy ke? FBL. Linguistic, linguistic. Oh, linguistic, sorry. Linguistic Bahasa. and Languages. Yeah, FLL lah. Huh? Faculty Ling Linguistic and Languages. Okay, they have been very, very active um, in publishing with Future Learn and with us, um, they have focused more on the uh, bahasa bahasa antarabangsa. Okay, this one is Let's Learn Portuguese Language from FBL. Next, Dr. Zahi. Okay, and another one from FBL, Let's Learn Thai Language. Those two courses are also very popular. Okay, um, also from AEI multiculturalism in Asian. So these are the 10 courses that we have published so far. Next. Oh, ada lagi. Eh. Okay. In the, in the making, yeah, one from uh, Dr. Zahir himself, Building Pathology, the Science of What Causes Buildings to Fail. I believe this is one of your topics kan, in your academic uh, current course, kan, Dr. Zahir? Yes, and this is going to be the MC. So this is a project uh, Yeah, this will be micro-credential. Remember, micro-credential is the concept is you pay students have to pay first before they are allowed to enroll in the course. Yang tadi, the 10 courses that we showed you, those are MOOC courses, meaning that students are uh, free to learn until um, they wanted to get a certificate, then only they pay. Okay. Okay, this one, Instructional Design and Technology for the Society, The Essence of Civic-Minded Instructional Designers is my own course in the making, inshallah will be published soon. Okay, uh, this one is also one topic from my existing master course, Instructional Design and Technology. Next, Dr. Zahir. Okay, so uh, I'm showing you uh, the courses in the developing phase. We have 12 courses yeah, we are looking into publishing soon. Uh, very, very soon to publish is another course from FLL ataupun FBL, Fun in Korea. This is a fun They are opening their course in February. February, so, yeah. Yes, two weeks away. We have finished all the review process, kan? 
Am yeah. I right? Yeah. Um, so we are going to publish Fun in Korea soon. Okay, you, um, this is uh, part of the academic course as well, if I'm not mistaken, kan, about Korean yeah. language. But they changed the title to make it, um, you know, in, interesting enough for people to see. Okay, so the content is also uh, seems to be leisure, tak lah terlalu apa, boring, terlalu academic. So we can do that. We can help you do that. Okay. So you can see um, there will be some courses from faculty of P, FOP, pharmacy, okay, the ABC of pharmacy. For this course, our micro-credential teams at EDAC um, have gone to their site okay, uh, to, to video record what is happening in the lab when they produce the uh, medicines. Then, okay, and there will be one from again Faculty of Medical uh, on Occupational Health, Faculty of Science and Makassid Al Sharia, Faculty of uh, Language and Linguistics again and Nanjit Language, IAS will be coming with Genetic Basis of Plant Breeding, IAS Introduction to Next Generation Sequencing Technologies, um, subject dia bombastic sikit. Okay, Library UM. Information literacy courses for researcher as also in the making and API Islam jihad and extremism. Okay, uh, there were also some new courses. This one uh, we're saying dalam peringkat perbincangan. Okay, again from FLL. I'm saying they are very active. Chinese language will be coming soon. Malay language also will be coming soon. And this one we wanted to make it expert track tadi. So that uh, people pay first before they come in into the program. Uh, sorry, before they enroll in the MC program. Okay. Um, FOS, Faculty of Science and API, they have this um, shared course, Young Crescent Moon. And from PSSE, Applied Sports Psychology. So there are many, many people are, are currently working with us to develop their own course and I hope uh, Next time we'll see one or two from your own faculty. Yeah. Okay. Next, right? Okay. Let me um, let's go to the basic. Okay. How to design an MC course? Okay. This is uh, not what we know now. Okay, what is as um, what we are currently doing? Okay. I'll take example of faculty of education. Faculty of Education have many programs. Okay, for this um, case study, we'll say that they have three main programs. Okay, they have Bachelor of Counseling, Bachelor of Education Tassel, and Bachelor of Early uh, Childhood Education. So in one academic program, there are several courses, right? Maybe 10, 12, okay? So let's say these are one, two, three, four, five courses in that uh, Bachelor of Early Childhood Education program. So we are not developing all, okay? You can choose just one course to start first, okay? Uh, next, Dr. Zahir. Okay, from that one course, you have to identify what are the main topics in that course. Okay, let's say we take one of the courses just now, Introduction to Instructional Technology. This is three credit courses to be delivered um, within 14 weeks time, okay? so. This course, Introduction to Instructional Technology, let's say we have four main topics, topic one, two, three, and four. Okay, identify first which top, what are the topics, and later, Zahir, okay, choose one subtopic um, that you think will, can stand alone, okay? For example, in this course, eh, sorry, in this, you know, in this course, we, Take uh, topic number three, sorry, yeah, topic number three, conducting need analysis, and we break it into subtopics so that we can start de uh, designing the micro credential course. Okay, so for topic three, conducting need analysis, if we further break it down into subtopics, we can see there are four subtopics available. Okay, we can start developing the first one, for example, uh, need assessment only as a standalone course. Okay, so we can offer it. If this is one, just one course, we can say this is a MOOC first. Okay, so when you start developing the second subtopic, then learner analysis, it can combine with the first one need assessment so that it can become a micro-credential uh, course. Next. Okay, if you want to even detail it out, 
uh, and our uh, instructional designer team at ADEC will help you to identify uh, the subtopics and other modules. You can even break down the topic, the subtopic into, into modules. Okay, modules is the basic or the smallest unit of instruction where you can no longer break it down into other um, subtopics. Okay, so if I will take the first subtopic, need assessment, I can identify that there are five uh, modules, uh, types of need assessment. So I can, that's why I say I can make it into just one uh, course. And uh, in that course, I can have five uh, sub-modules. Okay, so this is how micro-credentials work. Okay, uh, suitable with its name, micro means very small or the smallest unit. So we identify to the smallest unit that you can uh, design your course from. Okay, so some sometimes okay you want uh, you think that it's too small. Okay, for example, you think need assessment is too small, and you, you wanted to combine with the second one, which is learner analysis. You can do that as well. Okay, and the the ID thing will help you. Okay, so uh, next. Okay, so this is the big picture of micro credentials at UM. Okay, um, we have short term plan and also long term plan. Okay, if we can um, get an overview, uh, there are actually there are three types or category of micro credentials as defined by MQA. But in University Malaya so far, we only cater for category one and category three first. Okay, we want to see what is uh, what what can be done further before we uh, take the second category. So micro credentials at UM can be divided or categorized into number one academic program, meaning that the existing academic program that you are running in your faculty can be considered as uh, one of the MC programs. Okay, you start with identifying the program and then the courses and the topics and the subtopics. Okay? Second one, it can also come from professional development uh, programs. For example, in EDEC, we, have, we will run uh, the Emerald program for new lecturers. Okay, so we can also, and actually we are in the process of uh, transfer, uh, you can transfer, transform uh, the Emerald into online program and we will call it professional development program. You can also work on niche areas or niche programs. Let's say um, there is a very interesting, uh, maybe something cultural. I, I know that uh, faculty Sastra have a lot of interesting uh, programs that you think that you wanted to uh, show to the world. So we call it a niche program or a niche course. Okay. I, we have no idea in EDEC what it is. Perhaps if it's a Jabatan, the Timbalan Dekan, and Dekan can help us. Lah. Okay, you can identify what do you think will be something outstanding from your own program. Maybe something that, uh, a course that is very, very popular um, and people are looking at it or something cultural, something that has uh, commercial values that you wanted to develop into micro-credential, talk to us. Okay? Or if you have summer school programs, um, uh, that you run with your partners, for example, overseas, you can also talk to us and then we can discuss and help uh, to, to help you build the micro-credential course. Okay, so if you are thinking of current academic programs and this is what we are uh, wanted to promote today, okay, first identify the program, then identify the course to start with, and then break it down into topics and also modules, okay? If you can just identify the course, it will be also good because our uh, session designer team at ADEC can help you then identify which topics will be a good standalone topic for a micro-credential. Next. Okay, there are three categories of MC as defined by MQA. Okay, uh, number one, MCs, which are component of accredited programs of a higher education provider, meaning existing academic program. Okay, uh, and this is what we are pursuing right now. Second, uh, MCs, which are components of uh, accredited academic programs from multiple HEP, meaning that if you have um, a program run together with other universities, um, this 
is what uh, categorized as number two, type number two. But at the moment, we are not pursuing number two. I think it is quite complicated. Okay. But uh, number three is quite easy. This is uh, what we say the professional development courses. If you have any niche areas, um, summer school program and so on, this is called freestanding MCs. Okay, next. Okay, uh, next to say, sama je. Okay, how does my micro credential uh, works in University of Malaya? Let's take one example. Okay, this is a research methodology course for postgraduate students. This is one course that you are teaching. So we have 14 weeks, week one until week 14. Okay. Okay, so you can run your course as usual using spectrum. Let's say week one, you have a big topic introduction to research. So you will be using your Microsoft Teams and also your spectrum. So that's number uh, week four to six. Okay, then week seven to 11, okay, seven, 11. Okay, then week, the last week too, week 12 to 14, you decided uh, to ask your students, okay, kita dah ada um, uh, micro-credential course in FutureLearn. So let's ask your students to go to FutureLearn and learn from FutureLearn uh, course that you have developed. Okay, let's say the title in FutureLearn is Research Proposal Writing. So instead of delivering your instruction, um, using synchronous meetings uh, like Microsoft Teams, you can just ask them to self-directedly learning okay, as uh, in my in future learn platform and specify which course you want them to um, learn. So this is actually helping you, supposed to be helping you because you are not, um, you know, you are not uh, terbeban with delivering course every week okay you can take like um break last kejap for two weeks uh, ask them to go uh, and do self-directed learning using micro credential course that you have produced or published in future learn next okay there are some of the examples um from future learn i think we can skip this dr zahi Boleh lagi, uh, skip lagi. These are just some examples. Okay, I want to go to, uh, to what are the benefits of creating micro-credential course for lecturers and also for faculty. Okay. okay, what will you will get is that number one, you can create your own learning objects. Okay. What is learning object? Learning objects are learning materials that you produce for your course. Okay, you can get videos, animations, whatever, um, you know, materials related to your topics that you are teaching. Okay, and this is done with the help of a deck team. Okay, um, so let's say you have a very abstract concept uh, and you want to make it into um, micro-credential. With the help of our team, you can create the learning objects. You can use it in your future learn or soon if you think that, okay, tak nak lah letak dekat future learn, you can put it in the spectrum as well. So you already have the learning objects, okay? You don't have to create it many, many times, okay? You just create it once and then it can be reused many, many times. Okay, that is wise, kan? Second, you can create your international and inter international presence through MC. Based on our... Um, track or our record uh, future learn learners are people usually from the european countries okay so instead of just you know teaching in our small classroom at university of malaya no one know us but our topics are good we are a good lecturer you have the opportunity now to introduce yourself and introduce your course to the whole world and not just um any space you can a specific world, this one uh, will help you be known at the European countries as well. Okay, people might be contacting you, hopefully, yeah, make a network with you and so on. Okay, you can also explore new and exciting ways of teaching. This is good for your professional growth. Okay, you can experience both online and hybrid learning. Okay, um, usually we just focus on blended learning and now we are moving into hybrid learning. You can also totally teach online, okay? Uh, and that's it's a good experience for us. Hmm? 
As I mentioned, uh, you can also give yourself a teaching break on certain weeks because you can ask your students to just go to future learn and self learn, self directed learning is applied. Okay, so you can use the time to improve uh, your other materials for the next week and so on. Okay, you can also help your students learn better because students can learn with the learning objects or the teaching materials that you have created. The multimedia aspect is very important, the animations, the videos, so they can do repetition. Okay, the good thing about um, video recording or learning object is that they can reuse it so many times. If they don't learn certain concept, they can just rewind, replay, okay, move, uh, move forward and so on at their own time. Okay, so you don't have to, if you have like 100 students, they don't ask you the same questions and you have to provide the same answers 100 times. Okay, you can just uh, ask them to go to um, the learning objects that you have created and you can have more meaningful discussions with the whole class if you want. Okay, so if you are teaching um, uh, risk related courses, for example, those in engineering uh, or those in uh, medicine or those in Manilani? Pharmacy, okay, um, you can ask or you can allow your students to learn from the mistakes in very safe environment. Let's say they learn about, you know, champo champo, this ingredient and make a new drug, uh, okay. So, um, they tak payah test, betul-betul, okay. Uh, they can just do it virtually, okay. And then um, it won't harm themselves, also harm, uh, harm anyone else. Okay, for the department, faculty and program, you can support your faculty's growth nationally and internationally. Okay, you can be well known, not just you, but also the department, your program and University of Malaya. Okay, you can create excellent national and international reputation because this future learn is uh, one of the uh, recognized uh, learning platform as well as you can get an opportunity for your staff to relearn and upskill themselves. This is kind of totally new ways of teaching and learning. So you are in the trend already. Okay, next, um, we have created um, some sort of guideline about micro-credentials. Uh, soon will be updated. If you would like to get more information about the background and so on, you can always look at this. I think the website URL has now um, they will be changed soon because we are updating our website. Okay, we are moving into a new scheme or new layout. Okay. Next, okay, how to start? I hope you are uh, already excited, okay, interested, and you have in mind uh, what course you want. Okay, what you need to do is first meet the team. Okay, uh, let us know. Uh, through email that you are interested to create a micro-credential course and email to edac at um.edu.my or if you like, you can also just directly email our coordinator, Miss Perlinda, yang jadi uh, moderator tadi ya, Miss Perlinda, Perlinda at um.edu.my. So once we got request from you, what we'll do is that we will contact the PIC uh, person in charge. Okay, it could be one of uh, people this people, our team, um, Shida, Nora Shida Omar, she is our project manager and also instructional designer. Could be Nurul Janna, uh, instructional designer, video editor, Nur Shafika, instructional designer and video editor as well, and Cik Muhammad Anis, instructional designer and videographer, and uh, one Nur Izzati Ifa, she's an instructional designer and graphic designer. Okay, we have also Mr. Muhammad Huzairi and Mr. Nur Al-Azam who will um, in charge of the logistics and technical aspects. Okay, this is uh, when you, are, you want to do the video recording and so on, they will be helping you. So instructional designers are people who will help you uh, and guide you from the beginning uh, of the project. So you will be interacting with them one-to-one. -one. Okay, we have one-to-one uh, -one consultation based on your availability until uh, you complete the whole course. Okay, next, Dr. Zahir. We'll let a new URL in the chat. Eh? Okay, so I can simplify the steps into three phases if I can. Number one is planning. This is to be done uh, by you and your department. Talk to your Ketua Jabatan and um, request 
um, kind of not request, but uh, think about one courses that you want to develop as an MC course. Okay, one thing that we uh, really focus or, or we are uh, emphasize, emphasizing is that you need to get uh, consent from your department okay, when you want to publish um, a MC course. Okay, um, because there will be you will be involved with a lot of administrative tasks when you are doing your MC course. We want your uh, head of department agree to allow you to work on that. Okay, so think about the existing academic course or professional development course. Think about who will be involved. It could be individually run course or you have a team that you wanted to work with. Okay, and then. Think about who will be your uh, prospective learners. Okay, you can think about maybe you have an association uh, you're working with, as Dr. Zahir mentioned. Is there any professional body that can be interested um, in offering it as part of your CPD? Um, or any company, perhaps you have been consulting a company about a certain topic and in, uh, you are interested to work and collaborate with them or just general public, okay? If possible, we wanted to get as many people or targeted audiences ready when your course is launched. Okay, once you are ready with the planning, everything is done at the faculty and, and ketua department, uh, department level, now we can you can contact with us. So we, you are going to work with us. We can help you arrange your topics into topics and subtopics and subcontent. We can help you decide the best format to deliver your content. Okay, it might not just be video. Sometimes you also need a lot of text. Okay, sometimes animation. So the instructional designers will help you. Okay, you will go to video shooting with Team EDEC and also we'll do the course review internally, meaning that we will invite uh, experts in your course so that uh, they will look at the content and see what can be improved. Okay, once we are ready at EDEC level, EDEC will um, submit a request to Future Learn, and the Future Learn team will review the course that we have developed. Okay, and if um, they say it's okay, they can publish. And this is when we started to to um, uh, discuss about the course price. Okay, the price here means the price of the certificate when the students want to uh, buy or get the certificate. Okay. Um, so far, we have several courses. Berapa ya, Dr. Zahir? 32 pound ya? Pound ke dollars ya? That's the minimum. So, we can uh, normally uh, for MOOC courses will uh, start at 32 but normally we don't uh, charge 32. We'll charge starting at 42 until uh, about uh, 62 pounds. So, that's for uh, MOOC courses. Ah, okay. So because we are using Future Learn, they are UK based. So you are, we are using pound. Okay. So for certain courses, if I'm not mistaken, the engineering courses we uh, we we charge at fifty two pound. If I'm not mistaken. Okay. Some other courses only thirty two pound. So it depends on the um, our discussions with the Future Learn. They know better uh, the audience. Yeah? So. Voila, your course is now published at Future Learn. So we will run the course uh, maybe several times a year, maybe two times or three times per year. Okay, so during that time, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to have any synchronous meeting with your learners. Okay, there will be about 4,000 people uh, probably enrolled in your course. We are not expecting you to, you know, talk to them. So they are self-directed learning based course. Okay, but we will um, appreciate if you will be able to just uh, look at the comments. Maybe you are interested um, in certain comments and you wanted to reply and that will be good. Okay, then Dr. Zahir next. Okay, I think that's it for now. Do you have any questions? Dr. Zahir and I will be happy to answer. Okay, uh, to add uh, from that is uh, now um, we are running uh, a campaign together with uh, FutureLearn, uh, uh, our platform uh, provider. So uh, the, the FutureLearn platform is uh, giving um, UM staff and also uh, students a free access to a collection of uh, short online courses. So what it means is that um, the, the courses uh, which is um, which is being offered uh, for uh, the pay to uh, certify 
uh, is uh, some of them are actually uh, free to get certification. So you get you get a certification for free. So don't worry about the, the date September 2020. This is actually an old picture. So it's uh, the the upgrades ha has been extended until um, December 2022. So I just took the the old picture from from uh, the previous slide before, but. Uh, please just click on the link or you just uh, go into the link and we also um, uh, uh, have this link in our social media so if you go to edX um, Facebook or edX Instagram or uh, edX uh, LinkedIn you will be able also to see uh, this campaign you just click on the link and it will uh, bring you right away to the platform so uh, bring you right away to the website and then uh, from there you can actually start to validate your UM mail or this one mail uh, and get you that, 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 that free access. Is there any question from the audience? Okay, Sarah, Dr. Zahir Roha here. I'm just interested to find out how the um, sambutan up to now. Sambutan um, terhadap kursus so far, betul? Betul, yang dah ada tu kan yang tadi dah senaraikan kata dah. Okay. Is, it, is it the learner or is it the, the lecturer wanting to develop courses? Okay, you can do both. I'm actually more interested in the learner. Okay, actually the, the learn, we, uh, our learner numbers are uh, actually in the, the thousands I uh, we we I, I'm I'm not sure whether it's now at 16 or 20,000 uh, uh, registered learners uh, for for the course but, but then uh, the the educators who uh, also wanted to develop start to develop courses with us yeah is also uh, quite a lot so um, uh, and uh, we are actually queuing up uh, courses uh, right now uh, for development. But um, again, uh, with, with, with course development, uh, if you want to uh, design courses, uh, if you engage with us uh, early and also um, keep um, like talking to us, uh, having a, the, the conversation, um, you will be actually uh, be, will be entertained by our uh, IB team. Oh, boleh nampak saya nak share. Apa tu? Nampak tak screen saya share uh -huh. tentang the learn course. Nampak? Ada um, kak? Tak nampak eh? Tak nampak. Kita, kita stop sharing dulu kot. Nampak? Okay. Nampak? Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, I am sharing uh, screen tentang our future learn course yang sepuluh tadi tu. Nampak ke Dr. Zahir nampak ke? Nampak, nampak. Nampak. You're, you're sharing your screen now. Ah, okay, okay. So, um, tadi ada sepuluh course that I mentioned kan that we have published. Uh, kita boleh tengok satu per satu. Let's say kita tengok, ni ada lagi ke? Included in unlimited. Okay, let's say effective communication for engineers. Okay. Uh, so far for this course kita ada almost 2000 people enroll in this course. Tidak ingin saya nak buka satu-satu tapi uh, tersilap pula. Okay. So far kita punya learners are more than 1000 ya if I'm not mistaken. And uh, these are actually international international uh, learners. Uh, uh, dia bukan our student. Okay. This one is the newest one. The ideation from engineering. Kita tengok a few. Tadi ni apa pula ni benda If you have colleagues from other faculty that you think also um, sama topic uh, with you, that will be also interesting. Then uh, kita boleh ada orang oh, kata sharing course lah. Okay. They are pro and cons lah dalam if you are working alone, individually or if you are uh, working with a group. Kalau one group member lambat, the course will be published lambat sikit lah. Okay, the ideation course I mentioned just now ni baru sahaja di, di apa, di promote kan? Itu, di, di utara kan? Sorry. 
um, so kita tak ada learners lagi lah so people will click on the join course uh, and they will uh, kita akan buka pada hari bulan tertentu eh Dr. Zahir betul? Yeah. Kenapa dia kata available now? Oh, okay dia tak buka lagi dia baru masuk dia baru minta untuk join okay to other courses pun sama introduction to health research ethics tadi dah buka yang dah buka yang mana satu eh Linda Linda ke Umu? Yang eh, Umu pula Syida Yeah, this one Islamic calligraphy yang I said uh, quite popular, memang sangat popular. Doktor, uh, language Thailand, Portuguese. Language eh, mana? Okay, kat bawah. Portuguese ni eh? Portuguese, uh, language yang apa uh, dibuka sekarang lah. So we don't open the course uh, setiap masa sebab kita tak nak dia jadi macam apa, basi. Tak tahu apa perkataan yang lebih baik bahasa tu maksudnya uh, asyik nampak dia je yang keluar So kita nak uh, take turn lah sekejap course ni, sekejap course lain Okay for learn Portuguese language, ini kali yang keberapa ni Syida kita run course ni? Ketiga doktor Ah, uh, Ketiga kali kita learn, uh, kita run So the 2500 people enroll in this course And speak no Thai yang ini ada 3,000 uh, pelajar. Oh, 3,000 For the second run. For the second run. Dr. Roha. Ada ada persoalan? Ya, it's nice. Thank you for your question. Okay. Ada soalan lain daripada uh, Fakulti Sastra? Ada yang berminat terus nak cup-cup ke hari ini? Okay. Eh, tadi Dr. Zahir kata ada Q ya? Q dengan team A that ya? Dah ramai ah, ada kan orang ah. nak. Yeah. Ah, tapi itulah apa, walaupun uh, ada Q, uh, we entertain the, the most uh, uh, the most active uh, educator. So that means uh, although uh, katalah apa, uh, khusus tu dekat atas kan, tapi kalau lecturer dia senyap, uh, jadi kita tak boleh nak buat apa juga sebab um, the, the thing is with, with course development, um, you are the content expert and you are the ones uh, developing the the content. What we do is we design the content, our IT will design the content so that it's uh, appropriate for an online uh, course or an online, uh, on, online consumption. So that is uh, something that I think uh, will um, also enrich your face-to-face uh, -face, uh, learning or face-to-face -face teaching um, Uh, methods because you know uh, different audience have different needs uh, and when you design your courses properly then it will just be be useful for uh, um, not just the online learners but also the uh, your your face to face or your in class uh, learners as well hmm. so walaupun uh, Q tu nampak panjang tapi kadang-kadang kalau lecturer tu tak bergerak kita akan pergi kepada yang seterusnya lah So it all depends on the lecturer. Uh, if we get good collaboration with the lecturer, meaning the lecturer tu selalu uh, communicate with us. So kita akan dapat selesaikan kursus ni dalam masa 12 week, 12 minggu. Bermula daripada brainstorming sehingga ke publishing. Jadi um, in the past uh, year, we had support from our Timbalan Nap Chancellor Academic, Prof, uh, mantan, mantan TNCA Prof Kamila. Uh, she had agreed that whoever working with micro credential course, they will get one, uh, it is equivalent to one academic course. Meaning that let's say that semester you are teaching three course, if you are developing one uh, micro credential, you are considered as have teaching four courses actually. So you are supposed to get kind of exemption lah daripada mengajar kursus yang lain. So that you can uh, produce and publish your course within 12 weeks time. Tapi some of the departments uh, may not agree to that lah. Sometimes dia tak ada orang kan. Jadi uh, the lecturers tu kadang-kadang uh, tak dapat finish within that 12 weeks. It will take, dia yeah, ada drag sikit lah. Ambil masa beberapa lama lagi. Okay. So that's why if And that I think if I can add up is the KPI points. Uh, actually uh, the KPI points for uh, MOOC, semi-credential uh, is actually part of the, the system. So uh, if you uh, are able to develop a course, it will actually be counted in the, the KPI point system. And I think it's it's worth uh, quite quite a lot as well. It's 40, 40 points. Uh, 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 40 points. Okay, 
Okey, ada soalan yang terakhir daripada uh, audience. If not kita tamatkan. Um, moderator, do we have any uh, evaluation form ke that we want them to fill in? No need lah. Eh? No, we don't have any evaluation form. So we could just end the webinar. Kalau if there's no question from the audiences. Um, thank you so much for attending. Thank you Dr. Farah and Dr. Zahir. Uh, have a good lunch everyone. Thank you and Assalamualaikum. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Dr. Farah and Dr. Zahir. Terima kasih. Sama-sama. Oh Linda, our recording will be available di YouTube. Huh? Thank you. Uh, yes. yes. We will share the link later. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you.